just say. He can't hear you. How did you get in? You left your bag open. I told you to clear out. We're finished. I meant it. Do you want it in writing? Nobody drops Polly. Now that's a little lesson I'm going to teach you. And you're going to love it. Get out! That'll be Zorowski. I told him to ring here if he needed me. Leon? Yes? Could be a go. Yes. Yes, yes. Is the wife there? No, no. I think you've done everything you possibly can do. If he comes out of the coma, let me know. I'll be here for an hour and then home. Mm -hmm. Young man of 30, a wife and three children. Sometimes I wish I'd chosen a different profession. No hope? No. I haven't told them. Perhaps I was wrong, I just couldn't face it. You won't have to go back to the hospital tonight, dear Chien. You said you were so tired. Zorovsky is there. He's a good man. Yeah. Do you see anything of Marianne Dumont now they've moved? Do you see? Hmm? <coughs> oh, no, no, not a lot. He's doing very well, she said. One should grow less sensitive about this sort of thing, not more. No, oh, I don't know. I'm the same. You? Well, all you've got to do is to get your man or not. And I seems to me that you usually do. I thought it ended there. No, not always. Oh, I know. Red tape, files, evidence in court. And that needn't keep you awake at night. Have you ever seen an execution? Shoot. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I haven't, I'm glad to say. That must be even worse. Isn't there some poor devil yes. who's due to be a... They're called Jossé, Adrien Jossé. I heard tonight that his uh, reprieve has been turned down. In an hour, he'll know himself, and tomorrow morning... Well, at least you have the satisfaction of knowing that he committed the crime, that he deserved the punishment, if anyone can be said to deserve that punishment. Jules hates talking about his cases. No, I don't mind about this one. In a way, Josse was like a patient, you know. 
a sick man, and I've been trying to save in spite of himself, but... Oh, he beat me. Almost like your man, he seemed to have his... his own fate built into his bones. But I remember, it was in all the papers. Yeah, that's where I first knew about it. I'd been out on a case and didn't get back to headquarters until afternoon. Luca had made the arrest in the small hours. Some men are too intelligent for their own good. They talk too much, they explain too much, when a few straight answers would serve them better. Jose was that sort of man. We manufacture chemicals. All right, now tell us again in detail. Where were you last night? Ah, Petra. Adrian Jose. Inspector Megre, I'm so glad you've come at last. We've been trying to get his statement. Oh, uh, Judge Bonville seemed anxious to speak with you. I'll call him later. Well, Monsieur Jose, why are you so anxious to see me? Because I want to make a statement, but I want to start at the beginning. Did Sergeant Lugo want to start at the end? No, but all these questions, where was I, when did I, they don't mean anything. You've got to know what happened before. All right, come in and tell me. Right, come on. No, Mr. Jussie, where would you like to start? Eight years ago. Why? What happened then? That's when I first met Christine. Mm -hmm. I was an assistant in a shop, a chemist shop. Perhaps I ought to call it a pharmacy. All right, let's call it a pharmacy. I'd passed my exams, but I had no capital. I had no future. One day, a beautiful woman came in to buy face tissues. Mm -hmm. She came in again the next day, and after she'd made her purchase, she asked me quite suddenly if I would escort her to lunch. Her name was Christine Fontaine. She, is, uh, she was lonely. Hmm? Her husband had been killed in a car accident. She was terrified of living alone. I married her for only one reason, because I loved her. Uh, Judge Bonville, please. I don't expect you to believe that. Why shouldn't I believe it? Because she was ten years older than me and because she was wealthy. Very wealthy. She controlled the shares in a firm of manufacturing chemists. Mm. Yes, Judge. Yes, he's with me now. I'm taking his statement. I've just had a word with the divisional inspector. He got the impression it wouldn't take much to push Jose into making a confession. Mm. I'll uh, let you know if we get that far. At the moment, we're eight years back. Very well, Judge. So... Your wife was rich and lonely, but you married her for love. I heard what he said. In a way, I have a confession to make. I am guilty. Of what? Of losing the love of my wife. Oh. When we were first married, we were truly lovers. But I had taken over her husband's position in the firm. I had to work very hard. To justify yourself, hmm? To rebuild the business had been neglected. But I suppose, yes, to justify myself. I began to be more interested in the business than in Christine. I began to fail her as a husband. You quarrelled about them? Oh, no. We were always polite to each other. Even when I realised that Christine had found consolations. Other men? Oh, I don't blame her. She was interested in helping young artists, writers. And then, Inspector, I... I formed an association with my secretary. Annette Duchet, age 24, 16, or oh, call on call. The sergeant has all the details. But I want you to understand that there was nothing mercenary. I was allowed to buy meals. And pay the rent of her flat. Well, that is the convention. This morning, yesterday morning, Christine announced at breakfast that she'd be dining with friends. After work, I drove Annette to her apartment. At about eight o'clock, there was a knock at the door. More than a knock, a hammering. Are you Adrian Jose? Monsieur? I am Councillor Duché. Councillor? Annette, you must come home with me. Who told you about us? The caretaker, I suppose. I had a letter, it wasn't signed. 
Is it true? I don't know what she said. I can guess. Don't joke with me, Annette. Do you know what you have done to my daughter? Oh, Papa, stop it. He's done nothing. It's my own free will. Don't you know he's married? He's got a wife already. I suppose you'll pay for all this. Come on, Papa, sit down. There's no need for a scene. Oh, I've heard of your kind. You think money can buy anything. Love is for sale. Honor is for sale. This... This isn't the way I brought you up, Annette. Papa! Oh, what's the use? Actually, monsieur, you must judge us. Annette and I are going to be married. Adrian! You? You've just come in time to... to celebrate. It was like a boulevard farce. I said the first thing that came into my head for Annette's sake, and his. Did he believe you? I believed it myself as soon as I'd said it, and it worked. He calmed down, and we all had champagne, and drank to my engagement to Annette. After I'd divorced Christine. I mean, after Christine had divorced me. You've been very frank, monsieur. Oh, you may say I should have thought of Annette's future without the prompting of her father. That's perfectly true. But in the end, it all went off quite amicably. Oh, yes, indeed. Mm. Well, I'm afraid that you'll have to be prepared for a rather different view. The double life of Adrien Josse. You see, for the general public, your delicate private affairs take on a more dramatic flavor. Violence, scenes at Rue Colancourt, love nest invaded by a rape father. That's the caretaker. She gave that to the press, and the impression it gives is as false and vulgar as her own mind. Could it be that you were anxious for me to have your account before I had hers? Uh, I see what you mean. I was only frank with you because I knew I should have to be. Mm. Yes, I suppose that's partly true. Mm. Oh, of course I took the easy way out. You can. can I but you see, Inspector, I was thinking of Councillor Duchesne. I was so ashamed for him to be so angry. Not to realize that Paris isn't a provincial town. Monsieur Josse, you've been helping the police now for over 12 hours. Would you like some refreshment? Hmm? Oh, no, thank you. I've had police coffee three times. I'm not hungry. Mm. Adrien Josse, last night, sometime between 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock, your wife, Christine Josse, née Fontaine, was found killed, stabbed to death in your apartment. Did you kill her? I don't know. I really don't know. Jose's house, or rather Christine's, it was in her name, was a small but luxurious villa, Rue Lopère, in the suburbs. Opposite was the house of Colonel Lalande, a retired colonial administrator. He was to give evidence that he had seen Jose arrive home the previous night at 10.45 and nothing could budge him from that. When I took José to the scene of the crime, I could see the crowd had condemned him already. You could almost hear the guillotine being sharpened. They were after his blood. Finished here, Patron. Good. What do you want me to do with this? What is it? It's the key to the front door. I'll take that. I'll see you later, Patron. Is it permitted to offer you a drink, Inspector? You have one if you want. Tested for fingerprints. Ah, that's better. I'm afraid my actions last night after I left Annette are not in my favor. Now, normally I, I don't drink a great deal. I... Did your wife leave a will? Oh, yes, I suppose so. Hmm. When you made your offer to Annette, 
Did you consider the financial prospects? Yes, that's why I visited a number of bars before coming home. You were afraid to meet Christine, hmm? Yes, but I needed her advice. Her advice? Certainly. Christine was a very remarkable woman. Hmm. You said that she dined out. Well, she may have come back. I didn't look in her bedroom. The light was on here and I saw the time five minutes past ten. I wanted a drink, so I got the bottle and took it to the chair over there. Show me. I sat here drinking, wondering what I'd say to Christine. And I suppose I must have passed out. Then who at the supper? Supper? I assure you it's not the gendarme's breakfast. It must have been Christine. Who, well, according to you, had dined out with friends. You got a cook? Yes, one girl who does all the work, Julie. Mm -hmm. She seems to have made a couscous. What's that? Moroccan dish. She was rather good at it. Hmm. Was uh, Julie in when you came home? I don't know. Last night was her night off. She has a key? Yes. One like this? Yes, there's only one door. How long were you asleep in that chair? I don't remember. Well, what woke you? That's an interesting question. A feeling. Mm -hmm. A feeling that Christine was up there waiting. I remember I, I started to walk to her bedroom. Show me. Show me. And then I, 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 th I thought I'd go to the bathroom first. My head was cracking. Go on. What did you see? I thought she'd fallen. I spoke to her. And then I bent down to touch her. I saw the blood. And then? I needed a drink. I need one now. All right. Come down. Did you look at your watch? No, not then. I'd arrived back a few minutes after ten. It must have been about 12.15 when I rang the airline for timetable service. Why didn't you call a doctor? She was dead. And the police then? Didn't you want to find her murderer? Her murderer? That's what I can't fathom. I loved Christine. Yet, why did I say that I wanted to marry Annette? Subconsciously, I must have wanted Christine out of the way, and so I felt guilty. Then when I saw her dead, I felt terribly guilty, as though I had killed her myself. Do you understand what I mean? I hope you do. That was the only reason that you didn't call the police. The only reason? It wasn't because of your shirt. My shirt? Mm. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. Yes, there, there was blood on it. But I washed it out and put it in the air. I told the police all that. I only know that I wanted to escape from this house, from myself. There was a flight to Lisbon, a connection to South America. I changed, took my case. There's a taxi rank at the end of the... How are you going to live in South America? Oh, you confuse me by asking me all these questions. After all, I didn't fly to South America. I turned the taxi before it reached the air terminal. I came back here, I unpacked my case, I put my things away, I shaved, and then I went to the police station. Are you going to charge me? I didn't charge him. I decided to let him stew a little first.
On my advice, he moved into an hotel. It was typical of José that he said, I quite understand. It's one of yours. And of course it was. Maigret. Georges Bonville. The papers are holding us up to public ridicule. We'll have to charge José. With murder? Just because old Duché couldn't face a public scandal about his daughter. José hasn't even asked for a lawyer. In his own interest, we can't delay indefinitely. Well, I don't think we have enough material for a charge. That would be my responsibility. Well, José says that he came home at five past ten. Now, there's now no reason to lie about it. Colonel Lalande in the house opposite is absolutely precise that it was 10.45. Now, either one of them is lying, or the man that the Colonel Lalande saw was not José. Well, surely the Colonel is the more reliable witness? Remember, Judge, it was dark. Well, you can come in, please. Christine José had many men friends. I know, her artistic protégés. Sponges, perhaps. But where's the motive for murder? You can, this is your field. Yes, uh, Judge. Well, we've had many letters, the usual anonymous tips. Well, you can disregard the one I received and send out to you about Sabinsky, I know him. He's a young artist with a serious reputation. More to the point, perhaps he's in Rome on a scholarship, but some on the list are not quite so artistically minded. Emil Dona is one. Who's he? A boxer and a muscle man. Paul Papal's another, a degenerate who lives on rich women. Well, have we anything against these men? Have they criminal records? Not that we know of, and they all have very secure alibis. In any case, all this doesn't make it better for José. It adds a motive. Yes, that's very true. Also, there's another problem, Judge, the weapon. Probably had a blade seven inches long, a knife or dagger. No weapon was found, and the kitchen knives give negative results. Mm -hmm. Very well, then. I have to leave it to you. We'll defer the charge for the moment. But remember, Maitre, we can't delay too long. You must find that weapon. Yes, sir. Well, where do we look now? Our problem was solved in a quite unexpected way. Good luck for the prosecution, bad luck for José. Julie the maid had got another job in the uh, district. Mademoiselle! Mademoiselle Julie! Oh, it's you. <laughs> Luca had questioned her several times. She'd come back late, about 12.30, and gone straight to her room by the service stairs. So she saw nothing until she was woken by the police in the early hours. That's right, they used Previously, she said, Christine had changed her mind about going out and asked her to prepare supper. She had left a dish of couscous on the hot plate. Now she revealed something more. On a bureau on the landing, there used to be a German dagger, a war souvenir. Now it wasn't there. I decided to order the arrest of José. Judge Bonvie insisted upon manacles to placate the public. José said he would have told me about the dagger if I'd given him the chance. It was all part of his midnight panic. He'd thrown it down a drain on the way to the airport. We found it eventually, and it figured out the trial. The bloodstains were compatible with Christine's blood group. It had been wiped, but there was one fingerprint just under the guard. Jose. That was that. The verdict was a foregone conclusion. You didn't agree with it? Well, I had a feeling that Jose had been trying to tell me the truth the whole time, but with all that evidence. Excuse me. Mayor Yeah? Yes, he's here. For you, Etienne. Leon? He did. For how long? Oh, no, 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 no. No, it's only a matter of time. Thank you, Leon. Lucy, do you mind making your own way home? You're going back to the hospital. But you said there wasn't anything more you could do for that poor man. I must go. Can I get you a taxi? No, thank you. I've got the car. Etienne, hey, I'll come with you. We'll see you next month at our place. I'll make sure the telephone's out of order. So sorry, Jules. Let us know what happens. He's still alive. 
Maybe there's something I can do. Mm -hmm. Good night, my dear. Good night. Forgive me? Of course. Hmm. Oh, poor man. He looks so tired, too. Yeah. He's still alive. Maybe there's something I can do. Well, thank heavens you never became a doctor. Hmm? I should see even less of you than I do now. There's all the coffee left. Shall I reheat it for you? I thought he was on duty. Uh, uh, he had to go to a wedding party. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, bring me the Jose file. Yeah, yes, Petron. Jose file, Petron? But that's been closed six months. You give me those reports. Fetch me that file. Yes, Petron. Yes, yes, yes. Coming, Petron. For you, my favorite policeman. The, 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 the baton. What's he doing? Your reports. He just sent me up to get the Jose file. Jose. Hmm. <laughs> ah, baton. Uh, Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, fine, fine. We launched Le Quai on the sea of matrimony. <laughs> Don't ever give me. Well, are you sober? Uh, yes, yeah, sufficiently. What about Jussie? Jussie? No reprieve. Oh. Well, he didn't help himself very much, did he? Seemed anxious to take the blame for everything. For Annette, Christine, Christine's men, the marriage. Had a good advocate, Maître Bassin, but... Uh... But Maître Bassin failed to bring out strongly enough the fact that Jussie really loved his wife. If I'd been handling his defence, I'd have presented his case in, in an entirely different way. He made a good job of showing up the insincerity of Christine. He'd have done much better to have stressed the absolute integrity of Jose. He was quite sincere, you know, when he said he asked his wife for advice. I think Christine would have spotted what Jose refused to admit, that Annette seduced him. Hard to convince a jury. Well, he should have tried. Instead of going after mitigating circumstances, he should have stressed the absolute innocence of Jose, the, the lack of motive. He had no reason to kill his wife. At all? Ah. The fire's gone. Gone? Well, there's no one up there, and the fire's missing. Look again. No, wait. Of course, it would have gone over to justice while the reprieve was being considered. What about Colonel Lalande? He swore he saw Jose come home at 10.45. Well, Jossie says it was 10-5, and this was before he heard the Colonel's evidence. He had no reason to lie about it, but the Colonel could be wrong. Trained military observer, precise as a gun. Yes, I know, but he could have seen some other person with a motive and a key who did enter the house at 10-45, and he mistook him for Jossie. Well, we followed up every conceivable lead, and <laughs> the land was unshakable. Yes, well, personally, I worked overtime for three weeks. Do you know that woman picked some funny ones? Do you remember all those checks to that boxer, uh, Emile Donard? Cast iron alibi. And then there was Pope Paul. She gave him a sports car. He was just one of seven supposed protégés or lovers the defence threw up. With their list and ours, we checked on 23 people. And they all ended the same way. Blind alley. Yes, I'm not criticising. Oh, well, I only mentioned Pope Paul because he came out yesterday. Uh, it's ten o'clock. I suppose they must have told Jossie now. Uh, I suppose I'd better go and see him. I usually do. Do you want to go to the Sunday? Yeah. 
No, wait. Came out, you say? What was he in for? Yeah, that all. This man with the sports car. Oh, Paul. Well, we got him for beating up the wife of Bernard Papinos. And the funny thing about that was that she didn't want to prefer charges. Well, this is new. What was known about him at the time of Jossie's trial? Nothing at all. This happened about a month after Jossie went down. It was Papinos' first offence. He got six months, so four. And Madame Papinos went off on a round-the-world trip. Well, I knew about his racket. It's the first I've heard of violence. What was his alibi for Christine? It'll be on the file. Get it. That's all right. Fine, Papol. Get him up here. Hold him here till I get back. I want another talk with him. Do you want the governor of the Sante? No, I'll chance it with the chief warder. Quicker. Well, I wish I never mentioned Papol. Do you know who he is? Last time I found him in the bar Bobino. You better tie there again. Yes, but then again, he might be in any one of 15 or 20 other bars. Well, hurry, because time's running up. Hello, where you been? Give me a police. Department. De Sit down, Inspector. You may smoke if you wish. Thanks, I have my pipe. I hope you haven't come for a confession. They have a priest here. I've promised him all that sort of thing. You've already confessed to me. I have? Yeah, you said... I have lost the love of my wife. So, you remember that? Well, that's not quite true. Christine never ceased to love me. It would be more true to say... Let me put it this Shut way. up. But I'm only trying... You talk too much, but not about the right things. I tried to give you my feelings. You wanted the facts. That's life. There's always been one fact that you insisted on. You entered your house a few minutes after ten. At five minutes past ten. Yet Colonel Lalande swore that you came into your home at 10.45. And the jury preferred his evidence. How well do you know Colonel Lalande? Not at all. We never met. Does your wife know him? <laughs> Hardly. Christine's friends were all a hard drinking lot. Colonel Lalande only drank iced tea. He sat up till all hours drinking the stuff. How do you know that? Well, I do know it. Oh, yes, Julie told me. You remember Julie? Your maid. She was friends with Colonel Lalande's manservant or something. Colonel Lalande is quite sure that you came home at 10.45 that night. 40 minutes later than you said. I've thought a great deal about this. And there's only one answer, isn't there? Yeah. I was so drunk that I mistook the time. So drunk that I killed Christine without knowing it. There's no other explanation, is there? Is there anyone you want to see? I don't think so. Annette? I've dealt with her, Lise. Thank you for coming. Jesse? Yes, I did. I wish I hadn't. He convinced himself that he killed Christine without knowing it. Perhaps that's the answer after all. No, no, no. It's the answer of a man who wants to feel guilty to justify his own death. 
So we got for Paul to ask Fowler straight away. This is filed. That's a transcript of the Papinos case. I'll bring for Paul in. What was his alibi for Christine? Uh, he was in half a dozen bars. Half a dozen bars between 10 and 11? Nothing precise. Nothing precise. You know, a guilty man would have cooked up something, wouldn't he? Hmm. Bring him in. All right, Terence, let's have him. All right, come on, in here. Now, oh, what's the idea? Why have you pulled me in? Sit down. Well, what's the charge? Bold for bold. Is that your right name? Done all right so far. Don't be nervous. Hmm. Hmm. Very interested in you. Let's just say it's for the book. Hmm? I want to know about a man like you. How do you make your living? Eh? Where'd you get your money? I do all right. But how? Buying, selling, I get by. Hmm. Not too badly either, I'd say. Tailored silk shirts, diamond cufflinks. Look at those shoes, look at. Hmm. Hmm. Snakeskin. He grows his own. I don't have to be here, so what's the charge? Well, this one, uh, malicious assault on a woman, Michelle Papinos. Hmm? I served my sentence. You can't rake that up again. Yes, but I want to know why you did it. It's all down there. It was all said at the trial. Not why you assaulted her. Tell me. I roughed her up a bit. She was asking for it. Huh? What do you mean, she was asking for it? Well, she insulted you? She wanted it. Oh, she liked it. Like being knocked about. Some women do. Oh, I see. That's how you make your living. Huh? Rich women who get a thrill from a touch of violence. I don't have to answer that. I don't have to be here. I want a lawyer. <laughs> Getting nervous again? Why did you attack Madame Pavinos? I told you. Did she try to pay you off? Is that it? Nobody pays me off. Must be a dog's life. Oh, living on handouts, eh? Like scraps thrown into a poodle. Mean as hell, these rich women. They expect you to pick up the check in a restaurant. Oh, but you try and get a check out of them, they give you a tip like a waiter. Cufflinks. Time to When they've had their fun, they throw you aside like a worn-out shoe. It's pathetic. It's not much wonder you feel like roughing them up a bit sometimes. You know, I expect that's how it happened. Yeah. She tried to give him the push. So he decided to teach her a lesson. Ah, yes, yes. What beats me is how you got in the house. I didn't. I wasn't there. Oh, but you were there, Popo. It says here that you were found in Madame Papino's bedroom. Uh, perhaps he's thinking of another house. Before. I didn't say that. I said... What were you thinking of, Popo? Yeah, I knew this wasn't about Michelle. How, how do you know? I read the papers, all about Joseph. You were his wife's lover. I went round with her. I told you all about that. You told us something else, too, that you had a fight with her. I didn't say that. You were putting words into my mouth. Christine tried to give you the sack, but nobody does that to Popo. So you went to the house and you killed her. It's a lie. Prove it. How'd you get in? Did she open the door? I wasn't there. I never went there. We met in bars, places. She came to my place once. You went to that house. You found her husband dead drunk, and you stabbed her to death. Hmm? Prove I was there. Find a witness. It was Jose they saw go in, not me. It was in the papers. Where were you then? Between 10 and 11 the night she was killed. In a bar. Which bar? I don't remember. That's a rotten alibi. I don't need one. You can't touch me. I'm in the clear and you know it. Now... Is there anything else? You see, I have a living to make. No, oh, no. yes. Get out. Oh, it's a good try. You don't get me changing places with Jose. All right. Wait. Let me see those keys. Bring them here. Oh, you're tearing my support! Identical. The key of the Jossie house. 
You never went there. Yes, I had a key. She gave it to me. But I never used it. And you can't prove I used it. You shouldn't keep souvenirs in your record, Polly. To throw them away. You ought to know better than that, Thomas. That's all. Take him in there. Give him happy. Yes. Yeah. Don't touch me! No! No, it's a lie! It's a dirty trick! It's a lie! Please! Department of Justice, hurry. No, no, no. It's no good. They won't grant a stay. But he did it. Give me 24 hours and he'll no, break. No, he's right. We've got no proof that he ever used this key. Not while Colonel Lalanne's evidence stands. I've got to break that. <laughs> Inspector Megray, it's nearly midnight. I apologize, Colonel. But I want to talk to you again, urgently, about Adrien Josse. Come in. Thank you. I've interrupted your work. My evidence on the Josse case is on record. I've said all I know. I know, Colonel, repeatedly, without ever altering a word. That is why I would like you to tell it to me all over again. This uh, clock is correct, I take it? A military timepiece, monsieur. And in eight hours and nine minutes, Adrien Josse will go to the guillotine because of your unaltered word. Please sit down, Inspector. Thank you. This, as you know, is my usual seat. I was sitting here on the night of April the 17th when I saw Adrian Jasse return home. It was precisely 22.45 hours, 10.45. Uh, just one moment. You uh, always work as late as this? No, I never try to sleep until the early hours. Mm -hmm. What time do you start? Now after dinner at 9 o'clock. Never later. I've learned to keep fixed habits. Mm. How many times did you see uh, Adrian Jasse on the night of April 17th? Four times. Mm -hmm. At 10.45 entering, at 12.30 when he left the house and walked towards the taxis, at 1.12 when he returned by taxi and re-entered the house, and at 10 minutes past three when he left the house for the second time. Well, there is supporting evidence for the last three times, but not for the first. Inspector, I'm sorry for Jossie, but I cannot disbelieve the evidence of my own eyes. So you would hear Josse's car door pull up, you'd, uh, you'd hear the car door bang, you'd look up, and you'd say, uh, is that Josse again? But you might forget that you, you hadn't actually seen it. Please refer to my evidence. Uh, could you remind me? I heard Josse's car pull up. Did you see it pull up? No, I looked up after it had stopped. I heard it. You heard a car? I looked up and I saw Adrian Josse. He was illuminated by the sodium lamp in the street. And, and there was a light over his door. Excuse me. Certainly. You would have seen Jossie's back, hmm? Could it be that you saw some, some other person of similar build wearing a similar suit? It's just possible, isn't it? No. Do you mind telling me what's in that jug? What? Well, if you wish to know, it's a concoction of lime flowers. Oh, you have some digestive problem? A legacy from my service in Africa. Mm. Oh, big jug. I think it holds at least a litre. It holds one, no, 1,500 grams, one litre and a half. Hmm. You consume it all in the course of the evening? 
I refuse to be interrogated on the state of my kidneys. Uh, no, indeed, but uh, forgive a personal question, surely, after some hours. The bathroom also overlooks the street. It has just as good a view of, of Joss's house. Hmm. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. I won't trouble you anymore. Do you do your own cooking? I have an orderly. You enjoy couscous? working for some new neighbors at the end of the road. This is her night off. It was Julie's night off, the night Christine Jose was killed. Come here, Julie. Were you here the night Madame Jose was murdered? Were you? Yes, Inspector, she was. You realize, Colonel, that... He's a good man, Inspector. There was a bomb in our village. They came, both sides. My mother was dead. I was ten years old. They took me. The police took me. Policemen. The Inspector's not that kind of a policeman, Julie. <laughs> but this man... This one man... I shall love him till the day I die. Sit down, dear. <laughs> Colonel, would you say that on the night Christine Jose was murdered, you were not all the time at your desk? Make us some coffee. Oh, I thought you'd be asleep. I was. Oh. The telephone woke me. Telephone? Mm, it was Lucille. I asked her to ring me. Ah. Oh, I'm so sorry for them. Their patient died. I think mine will live. <laughs> 